Where's my book? Book review. The Field Guide to Understanding Human Error by Sidney Decker. Let's go. The problem in safety isn't deviation, it's complexity. Health and safety has gone mad. Health and safety is trying to unpick having gone mad in the past. There's no one solution and one problem. The problem is that we are looking for one solution. Does the structure of the team allow them to flourish? Feel safe enough to be uncomfortable. The environment defines our behaviours. People aren't the problem, they're the solution. Rebranding safety, crushing the stereotype. Brought to you by Risk Fluent. What's up guys, welcome back to Rebranding Safety. Rebranding Safety is a YouTube channel and podcast doing exactly what it says on the tin. We're here to rebrand health and safety, challenge the perception and challenge those over the top health and safety gone mad practices. And we do that through long form and short form YouTube and podcast. So go check out the podcast if you're new here, hit that subscribe button and the bell so you never miss another episode. In today's episode, we are doing book review. The Field Guide to Understanding Human Error by Mr. Sidney Decker. I finally got round to reading this. I'm pretty much about 10 years behind um, everyone else. This is the third edition of this book. Sidney Decker um, manages the Safety Science Innovation Lab at Griffith University in Australia, professor of psychology, professor of sociology, uh, patient safety, human factors, safety systems, and so many different universities, professor like bloody everywhere basically, all around human factors and safety systems and psychology and stuff like that. The man is pretty much a legend in the safety game, especially if you're a safety two buff. It's unbelievably hot in this room. I've got a fan on, it's doing nothing. It's like 30 degrees and I'm in this sweaty box room recording a book review. Anyway, I love what I do. Overview of this book there, 212 pages. I like a nice short book. I'm a simple man, simple things keep me happy. Um, it, it read and felt like a field guide, like, it's quite small. You can see like, if you focus, let me get the focus, there we go. You can see like, this has had a fair bit of bashing. I've got some post-its in it. You know, I, this is the kind of book you could have in your, you could, you know, fill it for post-it book, post-it notes and, and little tags and whatever, highlighters. And you could have it in your, in your bag all the time and treat it like a field error. I think it would work quite well for that, if I'm honest. It reads like that as well. It's quite, there's quite a few bits in there that are like some charts and stuff that will be really helpful. Let's see if I can find one for you now. There you go, like there's charts where we talk about old view and new view. You can see them. So, you know, they're good to be able to just kind of refresh your mind, especially if you're doing like an inv accident investigation or you're, you're talking about human error, you'd be able to reference this quite easy. So it, it felt red and is the size, etc., of a field guide. So. I thought that was quite good. The general tone of the book essentially is the human error, in the way I kind of interpret it, is not the cause of an incident, it's not the cause of something going wrong, it's essentially like the symptom of a problem. Yeah, so to kind of coin a phrase that I hear a lot, maybe potentially from uh, Todd's work, is that where, where you see things going wrong, there'll be error there, but also where you see things going right, there'll also be error there as well. And essentially, this is kind of the, the, the beginnings of that conversation. The book is essentially around human factors, human error, talks about hindsight bias, talks about so much stuff, kind of references like understanding the local rationality, understanding the context of the environment at the time. There's some real interesting examples, say for example, where they're getting a black box from a plane crash and they just look at the, the transcript of the conversation but then when they break the transcript down so you can see the gaps and the silences and the timings of it you really get to feel the, the tension of the conversation through the transcript as opposed to just reading the words. So you know, you're getting a better understanding of that kind of local rationality, the context of the environment, the relationships, the goals, the target. Essentially the message of the book is telling you to consider all of that. Okay, so let's go through some of the things I liked about the book. Like number one, overall it's kind of a relaxed feel to the book and one of the things I liked was the pictures in it. Yeah, I'm a simple man. And the, the pictures are kind of relaxed. Like, if you see it here, look, it, it's, it's, it's kind of like little stick men. And th this tunnel is pretty much the theme of the book. You can see it goes throughout the whole book pretty much. Like, this is page 31. I'm sure there's a tunnel one. Like, this is page 138. And there's another tunnel there. So the, the tunnel is used as a, as a kind of golden thread throughout the book to be able to communicate the message. It was quite a relaxed book, a relaxed read, and it wasn't too academic, which is nice. 
The overall tone of the book is, is, is like I say, it's about that kind of n not blaming human error and, and the kind of failure in, in blaming human error, how, how we're missing a trick when we blame human error. Now, if you've read much of Todd Conker's work, Eric Honagel's work, David Wood's work, if you're listening to podcasts like Safety of Work, if you're listening to The Hot Nerd with Sam Goodman, uh, Jay Allen, you know, any of these kind of people, if you're already kind of into that safety to world you know if you're engaging with people like Ron Gann if you're on the safety differently forum and you're looking at any of the amazing people that are on there and I understand I've, I've only picked a, a few there are thousands of people that are doing some amazing work in this industry but if you are heavily into that environment this might be a bit wasted on you um, I wouldn't say it was wasted on me because I'm, I'm still quite I'm in the infancy of this safety one to safety two kind of debate, argument, transition, whatever we want to call it. Um, so I wouldn't say it's wasted on me, but some stuff in there that I was like, yeah, I kind of get that, that, that's from what I read here or heard here or whatever. Um, but still, it was good to read. Interestingly, when we interviewed Todd Conklin on a podcast and um, he, he mentioned that this is probably one of the first books people should read um, if they're on that kind of journey into, into Safety Differently, Safety 2. Interestingly as well, I was listening to um, Carsten Bush the other day and he was saying that Safety Differently is, is different from Safety 2 because Safety 2 is essentially more uh, systems focus and Safety Differently, which is kind of the next step from this book, um, Sidney Decker's other book, Safety Differently, um, is, is more people focused, which kind of resonated in this book as well. This is very human error, people focused for obvious reasons. It's all about human error. I'm a sucker for a good story, me. So like number three is good use of stories in here. If I was going to improve it any more, I felt like the overall book could be a bit more storytelling-y. Um, just because that's my personal preference, I feel like I learned more in that. Um, but I don't think it was intended to be like that. It's, it's intended to be a field guide. So I think writing it in a more novel way would have would have conflicted with the truth with the chosen title. So I understand why they went there. But however, Sydney uses stories quite well, um, and some of them are quite harrowing, and some of them are really hard hitting, and some of them really hone in on the message, and they really bring it home. Um, so the use of stories in here, very very good. I really enjoyed it. Negative number one, and this is not so much a Sydney Decker um, specific negative. This is a book writing and article writing negative. Let me just find an example for you. Here we go. I friggin' hate it when people do this. When they take out a quote and they put it here, like, it just annoys the shit out of me. Like, I just, I don't, I don't know when to read it. Like, when are you supposed to read it? Like, you're reading along here and then you read whatever this is. They've taken it from somewhere in here and I'm, I'm going to read that in here. And I know they're like, they're trying to highlight it because they think it's really important, but it's like, it's just annoying, man. It's just annoying. I don't like it. I, I hate it. I never know when to read that bit and go back, and it just annoys me that I have to go back and read it. And and like a little bit OCD, I feel like I have to read it. I can't just go past it. I just it just it annoys me. It just annoys me. Please please don't do it. Please just don't. If you're writing a book now, don't do it. Thanks. Okay, so this one, I may come back and disagree with myself in a few years' time, but I felt like behavioural-based safety was misrepresented in this book. So this would be dislike number two, uh, and it's the last dislike. So I felt like BBS was misrepresented in here. I felt like what I've heard from the two main people I've kind of followed in the BBS world would be um, Professor Scott Geller and uh, Tim Marsh, and then probably Dominic Cooper as well. Um, but from what I understand from, from those gentlemen, that really wasn't what I felt matched the descriptions and the examples that were used in this book when referencing behavioural-based safety. I felt like it was more examples of poor implementation of behavioural-based safety. However, I will caveat that by saying I am in the infancy of this of this kind of new world and understanding behavioural-based safety and understanding HOP and human error and human factors and safety too and safety differently and all these new kind of systems or way or mindsets or lenses or whatever we want to call them. You know, I am new to it. So I might come back in a couple of years and, and eat my words. And I think I think there's nothing wrong with that. Um, the, at the time of making this video and at the time of reading this book, I felt like there was a little bit of misrepresentation there. And 
interestingly, again, when I was listening to Carsten Bush again, he said something extremely interesting on a call yesterday where he said, a lot of the kind of conversations when we're talking about safety one versus safety two is that we we lack local ra local rationality when we're talking about say Heinrich or something like that or like Sydney does in here as he talks about older systems it lacks a bit of local rationality which essentially it lacks a bit of a hat tip to say you know we understand the, the good way you've done to get here and we understand that actually at the time you probably didn't know any other and behavior based safety was was step number one upgrade number one and safety differently was upgrade number three and safety two is upgrade number four essentially and we look at it much more as like a we're attacking the old system and the new system is much better um so that was that's just an interesting thing i felt like the provocative kind of language in here was probably put in there for a sales technique if i'm honest um you know sydney's written a book called safety anarchist he probably called it that for a reason it's provocative it sells books it grabs your attention i'm not saying that sydney or any of us or anyone in these kind of rights of books or etc are out there to kind of attack the previous system or say that you know, the other system doesn't want to save lives or whatever. But what I am saying is that I just think the provocative language that people have chosen to use has probably caused a lot of the divide that we've got currently in the industry. Okay, that's enough from me. The book comes in at £23.18 pence for soft back soft cover soft back and you get it for 19 pounds 89 on kindle and you can get it for 80 pounds hardcover if you uh, have money that's burning a hole in your pocket now if you're going to buy the book please use the link below because it gives us a little bit of a kickback and it helps us kind of keep these videos going. Overall, I really liked the book. Uh, overall, it was it was just a nice book to read. It was quite easy to read. And like, like I said earlier, you know, Todd Conklin has, has a few times said that he thinks this is probably the first book people should read. So if you're, if you're new in this, this kind of journey, your career development has been very traditional to date, um, this is probably the best book for you to pick up first. Next book we are going to review will be Simon Sinek's start with why uh, or is it start with why or why not why it's something to do with why um, we're reading that now as you know it takes me a long time to read something so give me a couple of years to read this one joking in probably a couple of months if you've got a book that we you want us to review put it in the comments below let us know or if you've got a book that you really really liked drop it in the comments below so that everyone else can find out as well if you want to talk some more you can check me out on the social media channels that are coming onto your screen right now otherwise i'll catch you in the next video safe